What's going on, guys? It's your boy, Burrow 77 coming to you with some tips and tricks for baseball betting this weekend with All-Star Game approaching. Now, I've been handicapping baseball for quite a few seasons, and some of the things I've picked up on before All-Star break in relation to starting pitchers is very important and can help make you a lot of money this weekend. Today is Friday, July 12th and the All-Star Game is on Tuesday, July 16th. So that gives us, starting today, four days until the All-Star Game. You got a bunch of starting pitchers throwing this weekend, um, and there are some really good spots to fade guys that are going to the All-Star Game because I think that they're going to have a short hook so that they are available for the All-Star Game. Now, all of this stuff is situational and extremely dependent on other results and what happens over the weekend, but I'm gonna quickly go through the guys who are listed as potential starters for the All-Star Game, what they're doing this weekend, and if they're throwing, what to look for. Before I get into the full list, I do want to show you guys where I'm pulling this information from so that you can do your own research and make some of these decisions for yourself. I always think it's extremely important to show you guys how to do your own research and not just follow my picks blindly because I say so. I'm more so trying to share information with you on what has helped me be successful gambling before All-Star Weekend in the past than tell you exactly what to play. First off, you should all be familiar with Baseball Savant or BaseballSavant.MLB.com. When you get to Baseball Savant, go to this tab. Go to probable pitchers, and then you will see the probable pitchers today for 712. If you click on this little icon here for the calendar, you can then go out to Saturday 713 and Sunday 714. Along with Baseball Savant, you need to be familiar with Fangraphs. This is Fangraphs Roster Resource closer depth chart and it can be found at fangraphs.com backslash roster dash resource backslash closer dash depth dash chart all of these links will be in the video description here below but i just want to make sure you guys know where to find this stuff so you know what it is i'm talking about um uh fan graphs here will give you every relief pitcher's usage for the last six days starting with the furthest left being yesterday or Thursday 7-11 moving all the way to the right which is Saturday 7-6 so six full days of roster usage and arm usage for the pen here so now you're probably asking yourself why is this useful and what's important well we have a lot of starting pitchers scheduled to start Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Heading to the All-Star Game as starters, and we have a lot of guys, mostly Philly guys, who are going uh, that are going to be out of the pen. So I would kind of tell you that some of these pen arm guys are probably not going to be available on Sundays. And for me, I think it's just tough to ask a guy to come in as a reliever knowing he's got the all-star game to go to um and and that is a very important thing um you know unless you're in a really tight division or race for the playoffs you're probably going to try and limit the workload of your guys uh who are going to the all-star game philly is really important here we're going to talk about them a ton because they are sending a bunch of guys to the all-star game same with atlanta blah 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 so just trust me, I did my research. I have these notes published in my Discord um, and I'm sharing them here with you guys to try and help give you an edge in what to look for. So tonight we have scheduled starts for Tyreek Skubal of the Detroit Tigers. All-Star game is in four days. I expect a little bit of a short lease here for Skubal. Uh, I think he's a good look on pitching under outs, but depending on the lineup, I think his K's might still be very much in play here versus the Dodgers thrown against Paxton. The pen has only used three arms on Wednesday and two arms yesterday. None of those arms threw in back-to-back -back days. So Scooble is going to have a full bullpen behind him. 
And of those five relievers who threw, they all threw a reasonable amount of pitches and none of them threw in back-to-back -back games. So I believe that Detroit's bullpen is full and very deep and ready to back up Scooble here. So I think that that indicates that he will likely have a short leash as he is going to be one of the American League starters with some of the um, biggest break for him before the All-Star game. So Tyler Anderson is throwing along with Garrett Crochet, Logan Gilbert, Seth Lugo, Cole Raggins, and Scooble are all throwing this weekend. Guys who aren't throwing this weekend are Tanner Houck, and Corbin Burns, who threw yesterday. So again, um, to be available for the All-Star game and with how starting pitchers work, you're going to want to have a little bit of a short outing here. So I think an unders look on Scooble outs is definitely within the realm of possibility here. Moving on, again, scheduled start Friday night is Ranger Suarez for the Phillies. Both of Philly's closers are gassed. They have thrown back-to-back -back nights. Um, for guys like Alvarado, Hoffman, and Strom, they are likely unavailable to throw for Philly tonight after pitching two nights in a row, especially Hoffman and Strom being all-star selections themselves. So this leaves five pen arms for Philly with one setup man, one long relief man, and three middle relievers. Suarez might have to shoulder a bit of a load here today versus the A's, and I'm okay playing his K's overs and maybe even his outs here um, with a deeper look into who is available for Philly. Next up on Friday night, we have Cole Raggins from Kansas City. Kansas City is coming off of an off day, uh, but they had a double header with St. Louis on Wednesday because of a rainout. Uh, they use basically everybody in their entire bullpen, and you can find that information for yourself uh, through fan graphs, like I showed you earlier. But the good thing for Kansas City is they did not play Monday, Tuesday, or Thursday. Their only games this week have been that double header in St. Louis. So the Rangers bullpen should be pretty well rested here. It's also important to note that Kansas City has Boston, who is a much better batting team at home, especially versus left-handed pitching. If you look at their splits, they are atrocious against left-handed pitching on the road. They're still not great. It's still Boston. They still K a ton, but they're definitely better against lefties at home. So this is another spot where I'd look for a guy to maybe have a short leash in a short outing, um, especially since they're going to have another guy going to the All-Star game throwing on Saturday or Sunday, but we'll get to that. The next guy we're gonna talk about tonight is Garrett Crochet. He's scheduled to throw Friday night. The Chicago White Sox are a national embarrassment. They will let Crochet throw until his arm literally falls off his body. He's one of the only guys who can sell tickets at that stadium. Um, and that's really all the so Sox are concerned about. I would expect a full wor workload here out of Garrett Crochet. They don't really care about the All-Star game. Uh, for Christ's sakes, they bear, I don't think they even have 20 wins. This team is an embarrassment. Uh, so they'll work Crochet into the ground, and they're even talking about maybe trading him before the deadline here. So again, Chicago White Sox, national embarrassment. Expect a full workload from Garrett Crochet with very little restrictions. Next up and last on Friday night, Tyler Anderson of the Los Angeles Angels. The pen is fully rested. A AAA call-up reliever threw for 95 pitches yesterday is the only arm out of the pen. So three guys threw sub-20 pitches on Wednesday as relievers, so they should all be wet rested as well. He does get Seattle here tonight, who is an easy target to pick on, but I would still lean an out under here. Ks are probably fine for the overs just because Seattle's atrocious, but I would look for a little bit of a short leash on the Angels' only guy uh, going to the All-Star game here um, for as far as pitching is concerned. Next up, we move on to Saturday where Seth Lugo of the Kansas City Rangers is scheduled to start at 4.10 p.m. This is only three days away from All-Star games, so you can learn a few things um, about how they use 
Reagan's tonight on Friday. Expect a short leash unless they completely torch the pen here, uh, trying to help Reagan's out. Um, but if they don't torch the pen and they don't use a lot of pen arms and they would let Reagan's throw a full game, then I would probably look for Lugo to be the guy who's getting the short look. Again, only three days away from the All-Star game. Good target for outs, but keep an eye on that bullpen usage Friday night. Next up, we have Ronaldo Lopez of the Atlanta Braves. His scheduled start is Saturday night at 7.15 p.m. Eastern. He's playing an extremely K-adverse San Diego Padres squad, and the K's have been what Lopez is really good at. Um, when he's off, he has trouble locating the zone um, and stuff like that, and he does get to be a little bit more walk-prone. It's important to note that Atlanta has a fresh pen heading into Friday night, so make sure you watch the usage of relief pitching Friday night. If the pen is still in good shape, this is a prime unders look for K's as well as outs in my opinion, and especially with Chris Sale throwing Sunday. So that completes our Saturday uh, rotation of starters for the All-Star game um, that are throwing this weekend. There's only two guys left on Sunday. You just heard me mention Chris Sale. He is slated to start Sunday at 4 p or 4 10 p.m. Eastern for the Braves. Um, so Lopez and Sale throwing back to back, both going to the All-Star game. One will have three days rest. One will have two days rest. Um, Sale is throwing against Cease, who I think uh, is a great overs look. Cease likely feels snubbed from the All-Star game. Sale will be on two days rest, like I mentioned. Depending on how Atlanta approaches their use of guys out of the pen, for Lopez, I think that Sale is a prime unders look for outs and maybe even and definitely strikeouts to play in the Padres. So, yeah, keep an eye on what happens with Lopez Saturday night, and then that should help you kind of figure out what you want to do here with Sale uh, on Sunday afternoon. Get the information and make your decision then. I'm just pointing out that Sale is scheduled to start Sunday, and there is going to be a very correlated and adv advantageous look um, depending on how Lopez throws for uh, Saturday. Last but not least, we have Logan Gilbert, who is scheduled to start Sunday at 4.07 p.m. Eastern time. Again, All-Star game will only be two days away. He might get used more as an opener or have a hard hook after five innings if he looks like he might qualify for a win here or if it's in reach. Seattle is losing a lot of ground in the division though, and Houston has a history of finishing strong where Seattle opens really well, but fails to close out the division super well. Um, beating up on the Angels is probably a priority here to get the games for Seattle to get to the playoffs. Um, just knowing that Houston is breathing right down their neck. Keep an eye on the pen usage this weekend. I think he is still a good look for unders and a good look for a short hook here uh, because the Angels are bad. And if their bats can get uh, Seattle up a couple of runs here, I have a hard time seeing Logan Gilbert pitching much out of the fifth as long as he qualifies for the win. So that's a quick look at eight different starters who are all headed to the All-Star game this weekend. The other thing I'll let you guys know is guys not headed to the All-Star game probably have a longer leash and there are good looks for overs out there. If you're not heading to the All-Star game, you're going to get basically a full extra week of rest, especially if you're a starter um, and depending on where you're at in the rotation. But after All-Star break or right before All-Star break, I've seen a ton of guys go really, really deep into games. Um, this is where managers are perfectly let, fine letting guys who want the ball continue throwing. I watched Johnny Cueto go for like 125 pitches a couple of years ago for the Sox who hung in there tough and finally got me my over K's that I bet on uh, that particular year. I've seen Lance Lynn throw 120 plus. So um, if you have like prize picks or sleepers and they're offering pitch count stuff, that is definitely something to look at here in a way to kind of attack this board over under pitches um, for guys, depending on if they are going or not going to the all-star game over under outs is something that I think 
you can, a market you can definitely take advantage of, and just a few different pitcher things here outside of K's, which is normally what I talk about a lot, um, that I think you can make some money on, and that historically I've done pretty well on right before All Star breaks. So uh, I hope you found this video helpful. As always, please like and subscribe right here on YouTube. It is a major help to me, and it costs you guys absolutely nothing. I am going to be very light on content for Friday and Saturday for the weekend. I'm traveling. It's my cousin's bachelor party, so I'm super excited about that. But I will be back to cover the European final as well as the Copa America final Sunday, uh, starting right around 2.10 Eastern for Euros and right around 7.10 Eastern for Copa America. I look forward to seeing you all there. Best of luck while I'm out of town. As always, I hope to see you at the window. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Please be sure to like and subscribe. Oaks out. Doses.